I owe a lot to my uncles. It's good to have a, a support crew like them around. Pulling the paddle back too far. Get it out sooner. Everybody's getting so good in stand-up. If you don't keep improving, you're going to get passed by. The ocean has given me so much. It's the best, best. It is my greatest provider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it right there. I can't imagine my life without the ocean. I would go absolutely nuts. Yeah, no, for sure. I'll check and then I'll call you back. Okay, bye. Yeah, so that was Dave Kalama, and uh, I think we're gonna go paddle training down at the harbor. Hopefully, uh, you know, he can adjust my stroke and work on my speed. It'll be fun. It's always fun hanging with Dave. Racing, this is kind of new to the Stand Up World Tour. It's pretty exciting because you're not riding waves, but you're reading the ocean in a different way. It comes down to how long can you push yourself, and it's just another perspective. I like the graphic on the rails. Looks like your old school, like your Timponi Hawaiian designs. Mm -hmm. Those were super cool. You know what I like about racing? There's no gray area. You either beat the guy or you didn't beat the guy. And it's like taking a nail, sticking it in your eye, and slowly pounding it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go nail in the eye guy. You know, I'd have to give a lot of credit to people that have mentored me since I was, you know, since I was really, really little. You know, guys like Dave Kalama, guys like Laird Hamilton, Robbie Nash, Buzzy Kerbox, and out of respect, I'll call them uncles. Uncles, uncles in Hawaii is a much broader term. It goes to anybody that kind of looks after you or is a, a figure of authority. It's sort of a, a, a sign of respect. You're accelerating, you're deaccelerating at some point throughout the stroke. You want the same speed through the whole cycle, the whole time. What is cool about training with Dave Kalama is that, you know, he's still one of the fastest paddlers. And he's been coaching me and giving me tools and tips to start winning. Pulling the paddle back too far. Get it out sooner. If it comes out slightly behind your feet, that's not the end of the world. But I don't want to see you still pulling as it goes past your feet. He's paddling really well. So uh, just trying to refine his stroke, trying to get it super efficient. Get off your board for a second. Just those fine little details. but. Over the distance of 15, whatever, a few miles, they can make a big difference. OK, don't hit the sticks. Don't hit the sticks! Take care of all your business up front and then get out before you get to the stick. Just keep improving. That's the name of the game. Everybody's getting so good and stand up. If you don't keep improving, you're going to get passed by. That was good. That was really good. There was a noticeable difference in that last run right there. Let's head back to the ranch. here at Robbie Nash's house. Any chance I get to come over to Oahu, we try to go kite or go surf or go windsurf or do something fun. This is an inflatable kiteboard, surf style. <laughs> Robbie came up with it all by his very own self. <laughs> yeah, I'd say my relationship with Robbie is not like what most people would be to their boss. So this is what happens when you ride with Nash. They say you can ride all the best equipment in the world, but you end up riding kid paddles and inflatable boards. It's doing so good. <laughs> you know, we've got an interesting relationship, almost family at the same time, like uncle, but as he's grown, you know, our relationship has grown too. More than anything, Robbie's given me uh, more like advice for life. I'm talking to him a lot about finances, sponsorships, you know, making the right decisions, thinking long term. And with Kai right now not leading the tour, it's it's honestly a good thing. Not to just always be the best, but learn how to adapt and change. And he's gonna get back up. I'm sure, and kick everybody's butt again. I think it's a good learning experience to not win everything and figure out what it takes to win everything. Uncles are there to school you. 
you know, steer you in the right direction, keep you out of trouble, slap your head when you're going the wrong way. You know, it's a good system. I'm gonna miss my flight. <laughs> We are here in Chicago for the Stand Up World Series. This has been an amazing event so far. We've had some really, really fun racing, uh, a lot of sprint work and the long distance. It was super cool to go to a place like Chicago. Uh, I never really raced in a big city like that before. It just had a different vibe. We are here at the beach, ready to do some racing, hopefully. It must have been like 95 degrees and no wind. Short sprint races usually aren't my forte. I was going against Connor Baxter, who is one of the fastest, if not the fastest paddler in the world right now. The only way I was going to beat him if I just paddled harder, hurt more. It was a very big accomplishment when I got ahead of him. I just got to maintain that as long as I can. I kind of sure saved myself. I knew it was going to be a sprint from the last buoy in and uh, work saved it for that and caught up the sky and uh, Enjoy the water. jumped off first and that's what did it. The best races I've ever done were the ones where I had a result I did not expect. Now this extra little bit of momentum really motivates me for the next race. A huge rain cloud came in and it was kind of a trip. I don't think I've ever seen wind pick up that quick in my entire life. So basically that storm came through and blew everything apart. We got about 40 minutes till the next start. So hopefully everyone, we can all get this thing up and running again. After that, we had the uh, long distance race. Starting right in front of the event site and going around this point and basically going right in front of the skyline. And that will add up to about five miles. Challenges in that race was just maintaining pace. You gotta just dig deep in somewhere that you've never been before and let the hounds loose. That was hard. Anytime you try to break away from Connor, it's a mission. It was a lot of fun. It was an honor to paddle with him because he's the fastest guy in the world right now, I think. So to come up on top on this one feels good. However good you are surfing, you can only go so far by yourself. We're here in Hood River, super windy here, 35 knots, 40 knots. This time I'm gonna see what I made of in these conditions. 